Hello and welcome to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. This time I'm going to teach you how to use some files in animation. I also composed a shingle for the Clip Studio Tips community, so I hope you enjoy it. Working with sound. Ok, before we start, let's bring up the timeline palette by going into Window and then Timeline. This will bring up the timeline palette where we can edit our animation. Also, to hear the sound, we need to activate play in real time by going into animation, playback settings and play in real time. In this tutorial, I will focus only on audio, so I prepared an animation in advance. It's a simple animation using keyframes. Let's have a look. As you can see, it's really simple, but we can bring it to life by adding sound effects and ambience. First, we select the keyframe we want the audio to start, and then we go to File, Import, Audio. Then we pick the audio file we want. And now we have created a new audio layer or track with an audio clip inside. The audio formats Clip Studio Paint supports are 18 and 16 bit WAV, MP3, and OGG. So if some audio files don't work as you expected, try another format. Now, if we play the animation, we can hear the sound we just imported. We can treat these audio clips just as normal clips. If we want to move them, we can click and drag in the top of the clip when the mouse changes into a hand. We can also trim the start or the end by dragging from the edge of the clip. We can also use the operation tool and in the tool property panel we have a start time slider. If we move it, we can trim the start of the clip. We can have multiple clips inside an audio layer. We can import another audio file and if we have an audio layer selected, it will import it right after the last clip. This is really handy to keep the timeline organized. We can treat each clip separately. This will be really helpful for example for dialogue, but if we want to hear both sounds simultaneously, we need to create a new audio track. We can do it by going into animation, new animation layer, audio. This creates a new audio layer and we can import a new sound in it. This way we can play both sounds at the same time. Here I have a file with multiple short sounds in it. I want to split it so I can change the timing between the sounds. I select the frame I want to split, right click it and split clip. Now I can move each sound to match the animation, in this case the laser beams. To change the volume of the clips we need to use again the operation tool and in the tool property panel we have a volume slider. If we change the volume, it will automatically add a keyframe, but if we want to make a general edit, we can delete the keyframe by clicking add or delete volume keyframe. But if we want to add a fade in or fade out, we can add a keyframe, turn it into zero. Then we add another keyframe and turn the volume up. To create a fade out, we need to do the opposite. We add a 100% keyframe and then we turn down the volume. 
This way, the file will slowly ramp up to 100% volume, then it will stay like this until it reaches the other keyframe and it will fade out. We can change the timing of the fade by moving the keyframes. We can also use the graph editor to change the behavior of the interpolation. We can add or delete keyframes here in the graph editor. For example, we can make it a linear interpolation and it will change the volume at a constant rate. But if we turn it into a smooth interpolation, it will change the volume in a more natural way. Experiment with the handles to achieve different results. Now, let's activate the item bank by going into Window, Item Bank. Here we can see all the files we imported previously, and we can also register more files into the item bank without adding them into the timeline. This can be really helpful to organize our project when we need to create the sound design with multiple files staggered. If we click the orange icon, we access the item settings. Here we can change the name and also preview the file in any reference volume. If we want to add a file from the item bank, we can add a new audio layer and drag it into the canvas. Now I will keep adding sounds and adjusting the timing until I achieve the results I want. To export the final animation with sound, we need to go to File, Export Animation and choose Movie. Here we can choose between AVI and MP4. In this case I choose MP4 because it's a good delivery format. In the movie export settings, we can choose the audio quality, the frame rate, and the scaling settings. I'm using 30 FPS to get a smooth movie, but feel free to experiment with different rates and scaling settings. Now I will show you the final result. As you can see, just by adding some sound effects, we can add life to a simple animation like this. So those are the basic operations with the sound files. Try to experiment in your own animations. Animating songs. To animate the lyrics of our favorite songs, we just need to animate each word or phrase. First, I created labels to help me visualize where each word needs to be. And then we can animate the words with any technique we want. I like to create the final composition of each segment first, then I adjust the timing of each word to match the audio. This involves some trial and error, but the result is really fun. A good workflow tip is creating a complex animation of a particular word in another file, so we can keep the layers organized. Then we can import it into the main file by creating a file object. We go to File, Import, Create File Object. Then we select the file. As you can see, it imported the file as a file object, but we need to remove the background first. We can do it by going into the rendering settings and disable draw paper. This will turn the background transparent and we can position our animated word in the canvas. Okay, this is the end of the tutorial. Now I will leave you with the Clip Studio Tips shingle. I hope you enjoy it. See you next time. Hey.
teach and learn with a great community. Let's have some fun together in Clip Studio Tips.